500 years ago He washed ashore the sole survivor of a shipwreck And upon the skull of the man who killed his... G'day, this is x the Phantom Podcast. Our website is chroniclechamber.com. You can subscribe to our podcast via YouTube or through your favourite podcast apps. Today, we are going to be reviewing Sydney Weekend for 2023. Sydney Nova is the Australian Phantom Weekend. Fans from all around the world gather to Sydney in in, uh, New South Wales, Australia for Supernova various fan catch-ups and the famous Australian Lee Fork Memorial Bengala Explorers Club dinner, which raises money for Westmead Children's Hospital. This year, 7,000 plus was raised and we had many fan catch-ups, including some fans having a pub close on them, not once, nor twice, but three times on the weekend. Coming from the weekend, sorry, for a bit of fun, we are after a collective nouns for fans. So for fans that are so far, fans have given us the following collective nouns, a chronicle of fans, a foundation of fans, an obsession, old farts. Of course, these are all with PH, a tribe of fans, fascination of fans, a walkathon. If you have any better ones, please let us know. You can contact us via our email, which is chroniclechamber at gmail.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and also uh, Instagram. So you can let us know some other collective nouns that you may have on there as well. Now, today's podcast will have the following, a full video walkthrough of the free office. Uh, We did a short teaser one on Facebook, a wrap-up of Supernova and the Lee Fork Memorial Bengalas Explorers Club dinner, some creator grabs, which go for a minute or two. We've got uh, about three or four of those, and a special speech from the the Olympic dinner guest, Daniel Picciotti. It is a fabulous speech. Uh, You've got to listen to that through it as well. Uh, Well, sit back, enjoy. Hey guys, outside of Fru, uh, this is the warehouse here. We'll just have a quick flip around. So these are the prints that are on sale and the stuff, a lot of old Fru's. There's number two. How you going, Dudley? I'm going very well, thank you. <laughs> this is where Dudley sits. He's out in the shed. Oh, well, usually the roller doors close. <laughs> <laughs> so we go through the front door. Do they at least give you a parking spot? Hey. Do they give you a parking spot? Only since Glenn gave up driving. <laughs> <laughs> so we go through the main Come section. Oh. Lots of fans. So there's the free ones, these statues. You will see some statues that have not been released. There's a, some people recognize that. There's some interesting ones in the background. All the latest new stuff. And then we have where the glory is, original artwork, frames, uh, posters, War shields. This is quite neat. A lot of people, fans, will recognise that. Heaps of storage. All the stuff there, all prints. And then this is all the back issues. And there's another long shelf over there as well. And there's also storage in there as well. And then. This is the money shot, all the original artwork. Some jumpers up top. Beautiful shield. How you going, Glenn? Good. Uh, there's one of my favourites. Supply and demand. It's a hard hit. Beautiful ones at the top. More storage. And then we've got some amazing figurines. And here's some memorabilia. Maybe. 
A lot of fans probably recognize some of this stuff. This little belt buckle here is from Germany from the 60s, I believe it is. Some figurines, more the war, bit of an overview. But surprising they get any work done in here with all this amazing stuff to look at. G'day, uh, so I am recording in my hotel room. Just finished sleeping over on the Saturday. So, um, quick report, uh, it was bigger than last year, according to speaking to Duncan and Nick, who ended last year, so the sleeping over itself was bigger. A lot more people. Uh, they had organised it quite well with how you get in, then you, one line, then you break off, depending on if you've got the day pass, weekend pass, to that purpose. And then it was safe sailing in. Um, I uh, still like the, the two buildings joined into one. The, over, the All the panels was in the other room, which back in 2018 and 19 was, which was Artist Alley. Um, Artist Alley was very packed. Um, so most of you, obviously, are fan fans. Uh, so from a fan's perspective, uh, probably the highlight uh, would have been that there was a, a very good uh, cosplay. Um, I failed to find him. I found Wally. No jokes, I found someone dressed up as Wally, but I did not find the Phantom. Uh, maybe the old jungle saying is true that you don't find the Phantom, he finds you. Um, but from all reports, uh, speaking to Terry, uh, Duncan, uh, Paul, uh, Alan, I saw with a photo with him in there as well. The, the, the outfit, the costume was uh, very good, inspired by Billy Zane. Um, I believe he may even be one of Jamie Johnson's friends. Um, and I believe him and his partner do cosplay quite a bit. So uh, heads, uh, two thumbs up. You did, a, you did a great job on that. Um, hopefully I might see you tomorrow, um, but if not, I might have to try and hunt you down and uh, learn a little bit more about it because apparently the costume is very, very good. Uh, from an artist perspective um, and all creators, so from the creators, there was Julie Dittrich, uh Christopher Secure, who did um, uh, the sequel on the Reef Story, um, from artists, so there was Kieran Jack, probably a little bit uh, less unknown. He did the apparition. Uh, he's donated something for the dinner tonight. Um, so he had he had a new print on there, and then artists that are probably a little bit more familiar with uh, Alex Tripp. Uh, he just had the one phantom print, uh, but obviously there was the one that he did also for the three folio. He had these really nice prints where the metal in the drawing was reflect looked like metal. Um, so hopefully, and it apparently he's talked to Glenn about it, so hopefully we might see something like that for Phantom um, because, you know, the skull rings, the, the guns in metal framed as you move around and look at it, I reckon it will be a very nice effect. So hopefully we'll see something like that as well. Um, Danny Picciardi uh, had uh, quite a lot of artwork. Uh, a lot of it was already purchased by the time we got there. Um, and then he, he even had like one person give a huge amount offer for one and he just had to take it. So um, his artwork was very popular. A lot of people coming around him. Jamie Johnson, uh, very popular as well. Uh, same as Alex Tripp as well. Uh, it was next to impossible to get to see them uh, with all the groupies that are around him. Um, obviously, you know, Jamie with his signature as well, but also uh, Phantom was very popular as well. He sold a lot of prints, a lot of sketch covers, um, and a lot of artwork as well. Uh, I believe that he sold three covers, I believe, as well. So that's it, it's good news. It's good to see that a lot of fan fans are getting out there. Not all the regular known crew as well, apparently, from reports. Uh, I was kind of listening to a few conversations and, you know, they're not the normal ones. They're like, yeah, I love the fan, love the fan. And then they were saying, oh, so you're part of this, part of that. Oh, no, not just just long-term reader. And, and we're all old people as well, which is always a good sign as well. Uh, Camilo was there as well. He was very popular with his Ninja Turtles. Uh, to, uh, Jamie. Uh, Matt Cohen was there. He was next to uh, Julie as well. Um, he was very popular, sold a lot of his artwork. He had a big stack of sketch covers, probably, you know, it's probably about 20 of them, sold them inside half a day. Um, the sketch covers are popular. Uh, apparently, they're all sold out, uh, the blue ones and the white ones. Um, so, yeah, look, I collect sketch covers and I know a few other people do as well. So hopefully, if you were listening to this, and they would do some more sketch 
covers as well because um, yeah, my, my stock is running low, and I'm sure some others as well. Um, so that was good. Uh, Dean Rankine, uh, who did the last blood story in the Christmas uh, special, uh, talked to him about Sam. He was there. He was very, very happy about the Sam story being created. Um, apparently, he just sends short stories in all the time, so he was really excited about the first one being sent in. He's a very popular creator as well, artist and writer, uh, with his Simpsons, Future Armor stuff, and some other stuff as well. So. Um, it's good to see these 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 large names, people getting involved and and, and creating stuff for free. Um, it, it was it was really it was really nice listening to him talk about that story and about you know how he meant how much he appreciated working with five uh, and stuff like that. Um, other highlights was uh, Julie uh, getting to talk to her about uh, the Golden Circle story. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, but Fifi, one of my favourites. Um, plays a big part in the upcoming uh, story that's been drawn by Wendell. So I was pretty excited about that. Um, the other one which was interested was talking to Christopher um, about the Reef sequel story. Just talking to him, he's a deep thinker, Chris. He's, um, so just talking to him about how he wanted to show the Phantom uh, being challenged and then having like an arch nemesis. And then when he read this story, he thought, you know, Ray could become that and then he but he wanted it not just to be the typical yin and yang style but he wanted we we kind of come out of the words like the reverse phantom like in in flash you've got the reverse flash which is the bad version of barry allen of the flash so you know almost kind of like a, a reverse phantom he dressed up as the phantom he tried to want to do that but he was totally bad so it was really interesting um talking to him about that Looking at a couple of panels, um, like the one at the start. So if you turn to the first page, you see the Phantom. He's got his hand on his on his shoulder and his kind of head down, and 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 you know he wanted to show the the feeling that the Phantom had the the pressures of the world, the pressures of the role on his back. And that's why he's holding his back. And it's you know if you ever go to these conventions, it it is great to talk to these creators um, about how they did something, why they did this, you know, why they did this pose, why they did this sequence and stuff like that. You know, why, you know, like, for instance, if they're on a building, why did you do the building panels, you know, going in towards them, which draws your eye. It's just, it, it, I find it fascinating. I'm sure there's some others that find it fascinating as well. So if you ever do get a chance, do it, talk to them about their artwork, tell them what you appreciated. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's good fun. Um, we had lunch, which was uh, low key, probably compared to a few other uh, years. There was uh, there's photos flying around on social media and stuff. There's probably maybe ten, maybe a dozen of us, if that, um, at different times. That, that was good. It's just good to kind of most of us, you know, you kind of tend to go your own ways. So people look for stuff for their kids or, or whatever. But then you kind of meet again for lunch and, and you know and spend some time together. Um, Last night, again, probably a little bit low-key. There's, you know, a lot of people are still hesitant about um, COVID and stuff like that, but last night was good. Uh, you know, you, you get to meet people that you've talked to on Facebook and social media and, and, and stuff like that for years, but you, you never really get to meet. Like, I got to spend a bit of time with uh, Sam Allen and it was like, you know, you, you say hi to him in passing. I think I've seen him at a dinner before. Um, I've brought stuff off him, which I'm sure most of us have. But to actually kind of sit down, have a beer, me a coke, um, but just to like sit down with him and, and chat, it's it's always good. Just because you get, you know, you find stuff. It's just it's just a really good time. Um, so yeah, look, uh, the next report would be after the dinner. Um, I'm about to get ready to go to dinner. No, I'm not going to be wearing this. I've got, I've got pants. I'm not sure. I'm not, well, I'm not rocking up in shorts. I'm sure that's what a few people want to know. Um, I've got proper proper pants. Um, there, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, people, a lot of people, a lot of uh, creators and artists there tonight. So look, I expect it to go well. Um, look, it is a big weekend. It is an expensive weekend. And stuff like that. But, you know, if you do come, oh, before I forget, I met uh, Bradley Kelly from the Phantom Cave for the first time. Uh, it was good to meet him. Uh, gave him a chronic chamber wristband. I uh, got a photo together. Um, you know, spent five ten minutes talking. Um, just you know, it's it, 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 it's good. You know, look, we're just fans that they love the fan, and we're just you know, 
like to talk about the fandom. So it's, um, you know, it was good to touch base with him, to talk to him. Um, and I saw him there with some of the other creators and stuff like that as well. So it, it was good. Good to see you all. Um, we'll shoot over to the next report and hopefully we'll have some more fun afterwards. So this is going to be the part of the wrap-up for the dinner. As you can probably tell by my voice and the way I look if you're on YouTube, um, it was a long night. I didn't get home till about 3.30 in the morning and we got about four or five hours sleep after that. Um, And there was a few others that stayed out as well. And I wasn't drinking and I feel like rubbish, so I'm not sure what they feel like either. Um, Okay, so the dinner starts at 7. Look, these dinners go for a good four or five hours and it's still not long enough. Um, you, you're having, there's a good 50 odd, 60, 70 odd people in a room talking about something that they all love. There's partners that are um, uh, dragged along, um, but it was good to see a lot of the partners really, really said that, you know, this is some of the best nights they ever have. Um you know, and then a lot of them get into the bidding as well and, and, and bidding in the house as well. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And, and you know, it, it, it's just great. Um, of course, all proceeds go to, uh, to the Westmead's Children Hospital over here in Sydney. Um, there would have been a good five, six, if not more, uh, that was raised. Um, some standout pieces were uh, Antonio Lemesis went for just under a grand. Um, Daniel Picciardio's piece, beautiful piece. Um, I've done a quick video walkthrough. Um, I'll post that up here as well just before this. Um, that, you know, that went for, again, just under a grand. Uh, Jamie McPherson had a, uh, a comics review cover, beautiful cover. Um, I got in a bidding wall with uh, Chris Hill on that one. Uh, congratulations, Chris, you picked me on that one. Um, well done. For someone who decided he was never going to collect art, he is definitely, definitely drowning in art at the moment. Uh, I think he ended up with probably about four or five pieces for the weekend. Um, welcome to the art club. Chris, and uh, it's a very slippery slope. Uh, I got a Paul Mason piece uh, for the Mass, Mass Marvel. This one went for about 400, 450, I believe. Uh, he also did an amazing Vietnam uh, part as well, which um, there was a bidding war. There was a phone, uh, there was a bidding war between a phone ringing. Um, G'day, Sean, and also uh, Duncan. Uh, Duncan had this zero in look. He was not going to lose that one. Um, it was an amazing piece, full, full, um, full body shot. Uh, he, yeah, he, he, he did an amazing job with that one. Uh, that went for a good. That went went for a good seven, eight hundred dollars or something like that as well. Um, there was a lot of other pieces. There was some Sir Barry uh, originals. Um, there was some pieces by Eugenio. They went for about. Three to three fifty each, I believe. Um, so you know, thank you for sending those through, Eugenio and Cell. Uh, you did a great job there. Um, Daniel Picciardo's speech. Wow, it, it was very felt, t- uh, very touching uh, for someone who's who's you know a father, but also had father issues myself. Um, it really rang true, and there were there were fans that were crying in the room. Um, that were, that were very touched by it. Um, you know, it was very heartfelt. It was very, you know, honest. Um, I've checked with him twice to make sure that I could um, include that in here because, you know, it was very, you know, there was a lot of private stuff that was talked. Um, but it was, you know, it was a very beautiful speech. Uh, so thank you, Daniel, for your time. Thank you for your artwork and all the other artists and donations. And the, and the good thing is it's not just... It's not just all the, you know, creators that are donating stuff. There was, you know, there was stuff that was donated by fans out of their own collections to raise money as well. And, you know, some stuff might only either might have only gone for $20 or $30 or $50 or $100, but it all adds up. There would have been a good 500, you know, 50 plus items all together and it all raised money and it all counts because there are children lives who have been touched who are basically going to be able to feel safe when they're in hospital um you know and all of the people that have spent time in hospital as children or got children that have been in hospital you know that that is important so it's um 
you know, Fama fans out there who have donated. There's been Fama fans around the world, uh, America, um, Europe, Italy, uh, all around Australia. Um, some highlights include, um, oh, wow, there's so many to talk about. Um, you know, and the other good thing is you have, you know, it's, you know, you're having creators, you're having publishers, so like Renee, uh, Dudley and Glenn were there and they're just part of the boys along with, you know, Paul Mason, Andrew Constant, Alex Tripp, Daniel Picciaccio, uh, Duncan, Matt Kime, you know, all the Antonio Lemus, you know, there's all these creators and these are all there and these are all mates, these are all having fun. And it's, it, it is a really good night. Um, you know, look, you do spend money. It, it, it does cost money to be able to go. It is by invite only. But if you do get an opportunity to go, you won't regret it. Um, yeah, so some of the highlights, you know, I absolutely loved um, seeing seeing the wives and, and, and the so-called plus ones getting involved um, and, and, and and having so much fun. You know, they, they look forward to this just as much as, as their uh, geeky husbands and partners. Um, and, you know, it, it's really good to see. Um, another story that I heard was there was um, there was a guy, uh, one of the koala prints of Keith Shadow with the waterfall. Um, there was a guy who brought that as a 14-year-old kid. It got, it disappeared. And then, so it was back in 1990, almost 30 years later, he saw it and he's like, childhood memory, nostalgia, I'm getting this. He said he, he probably paid over for it, but now he's reconnected with that piece and he feels like a, a part of his childhood has been reconnected with. But you can't make that stuff up. Um, it is such a good story. Um, you know, it, it, it's amazing. Um, uh, you know, for me, one of my favourite Wilson McCoy stories is the Mass Marvel. And, you know, in that story, he's raising money for a children's hospital. Serendipity or what? Um, you know, uh, so, yeah, look, it was great. Um, spent some great time, had some uh, good friends. Uh, Dan, um, you know, Dan was there from a chronicle point of view, along with myself. Uh, Dan brought uh, Angus, his, his youngest. I had the absolute... Absolute fun. There was several kids there as well. Uh, Alan brought uh, his um, uh, twin son, twin daughter. Um, you know, you're having kids running around, enjoying it, getting getting high on sugar from how you can drink the most Cokes and, you know, uh, bidding on stuff and, you know, hanging out with their idols. Um, you know, we were talking to Angus and we we're like, oh, he's your favourite artist. And he goes, oh, you know, Paul Mason. And, and as as he's saying that, Paul Mason's coming into the conversation <laughs> and there was this, you know, beautiful moment between them. Uh, Alan's daughter, Mara, has a, an affiliation and a, and, a, and a close relationship with Antonio Lemus, who's their favourite artist. And it's just like, you know, there's the there's that, there's that those moments between them. It's, it's really touching. Um, look, that's pretty much all from me. Um, an amazing privilege to be able to attend. Um, we are not including the, what do you call it, the bidding night from it. Um, it was recorded, but um, we're not going to include it in this podcast. We have it, like I said, we have included Daniel's speech, which will come after me dribbling now. Um, and... And, and that will probably be it. I'm going back out to Supernova now. Um, it's 10 o'clock and I finally feel like I'm awake. Um, I'll try and get a little bit of audio and maybe some video from some of the creators down on Supernova on Sunday. But it was really busy yesterday, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. We'll see. Um, but, look, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, the, the wristbands went off. We've still got some, so I know there were some people that didn't attend Supernova or not part of Patreon that were interested in those. But we'll probably have a couple of competitions to uh, get rid of some more. But uh, you know that that's something that we that we that as a as Chronicle Chamber that we try and do 
for those in attendance because we want to be able to you know get photos with people. We want to be able to you know catch up with fans and and, and stuff like that, and to be able to help them to remember. Um, but we will. Uh, so all Patreons have been given one. And then those who have come up to us during the weekend and said happy fans and, and stuff like that have received some as well. Um, but we will make some available to other fans. Um, we, you know, we want news to feel special or, uh, and stuff like that as well. So we will have some prizes probably in the next coming upcoming weeks. Um, and, you know, it will be various ways. So if you are interested in those, check continue to check us out on uh, social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. Um, I'm still trying to get Duncan to uh, do up a, a, a TikTok page for us. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll continue to work on that one, won't we, Duncan? Um, for myself, thank you. And until next time, happy fans me. So I never imagined that I'd be up here talking about myself. But I am in front of a bunch of friends, so thank you. Uh, uh, you know what's funny? I went to my sister's wedding, and uh, and I remember going to my sister's wedding. And on the way, the bridal party, we were in a bunch of cars, like three or four cars. And as we were going, we just started pulling off into Maccas. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cars, cars are going into Maccas right now. And as we got in, I, I actually stepped into Maccas, and my brother-in-law was standing there, and he was about to order some food. And I was like, hey man, like. Aren't you nervous about the day? And he goes, no, nah, I'm just hungry. <laughs> so uh, I would say, thank you for the food. <laughs> and thank you for uh, Deus, uh, Deus Cafe for the delicious food. Um, I will start off by saying that uh, I actually speak publicly a lot, um, but it's never about myself. So I will start off by saying, uh, give me a second. Firstly, I will say thank you to everyone. I should say that. I should say that. Uh, I never thought my work would take me to the point where I am right now. Uh, so it feels really nice. But. And I'm not going to bore you tonight with like a long-winded story of all the details, as uh, as Richard said, like as when I was born. But in saying that, um, back when I was in my mum's womb, <laughs> no, I'm actually being serious right now. I uh, they told my dad that I would be a girl, and he was ecstatic because I had two brothers, and he was like, "Finally, I'm going to get a sister." And then uh, as I was born. As legend would have it, was uh, he saw me and that I was a male, and then he fainted. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I've let him down ever since. Uh, <laughs> this is going to come back around. It's okay. Uh, so, um, in saying that, uh, as I was growing up, and I'm going to be honest with you guys. So, what I'm going to do is tell you a whole story, and it's going to come back full circle. Uh, I started off as a kid, I was highly competitive and I was playing soccer. Um, shout out to Carl in the background. <laughs> uh, yeah, I used to play soccer and then I said to my dad, um, no dad, I'm not going to play soccer anymore, I'm actually going to play basketball. And he goes, well, you're too short for basketball. Um, and then he, being Italian, he, he completely disowned me because that's like sacrilege. You've got to play soccer. I don't even know what basketball is. Uh, and then uh, that was the first time I let my second time I let my dad go. Third time, uh, I started working as I finished work, uh, school. I started working for the Commonwealth Bank, and I worked there for yeah. I worked. That's right, rich bank. Um, and I started. I was working there for ten years, and in the back of my mind, I always knew, ever since I was like eight years old, that I wanted to draw comic books. And I didn't know how I was going to break it to my dad that I wanted to leave the bank and draw comics. So one day as a joke, I just came home like, hey dad, uh, I quit, I quit my job. And he screamed at me, he's like, what? I can't believe it, that's such a good job. I was like, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. I didn't do it. But about three months later, I did. 
But I stopped in the blue. So I was like, Dad, I actually did quit my job this time. He's like, oh, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dedicate my life to drawing comics. So what I've always wanted to do, I'm going to get old. I've got to de dedicate my life to it. And then I started drawing comics. Uh, and that was the third time I let my dad down. <laughs> uh, and then um, he actually said, I remember this. Uh, he said, during my first Comic Con, I think it was 2012, I did Supernova. And he was so upset with me that he goes, I think your dreams are going to fail. Yeah, he said that. Um, in saying that, we fast forward a little bit up until maybe about 2016. We had a family gathering, a huge family gathering, everyone was there. And he comes in. Uh, actually, let me pause that for a second, keep that thought, because I've got to talk about my process there. I left Commonwealth Bank in 2008, uh, and it was not as easy as I thought. I said, I'm going to use my own money, I'm going to take a year off, and I'm going to dedicate myself to destroying comics. And by the end of this year, I'm going to be there. And um, I started giving my, my original work out to professional artists, and I was like, hey, like, groom me, give me critiques. There's no school for this, there's no uni for this, I can't learn this anywhere. Uh, and I started getting feedback. And one of the feedbacks, the feedback that I got was, uh, I handed my, I went to Supernova, I hand, handed my original work to somebody, and he looked up at me, at me and he said, uh, do you want me to tell you a new one? And I said, yes, <laughs> please do, please do. And then he critiqued my work, he didn't like anything about it, and, um, and that guy is my closest friend right now. Like one of my closest friends that we text every day. You might know him, but that's right, I'm not going to name him, but he was sitting next to me at Supernova today. Um, <laughs> no, he's a really good guy, and he meant it on purpose um, for a reason. And that was how my life continued. I went to, uh, in 2008, I went to Comic Con in New York. I had my work over, and, uh, and that's when I started getting positive feedback around my work. I started getting people saying, hey, like, you're almost there. You're almost there. And that was like, uh, his name was JJ Kirby. He works with Jim Lee in America, if you know anything about my books. This Jim Lee is quite a big name. And, uh, and that's when I thought, okay, I'm going to continue this and see how it goes. Um, I did continue. Along the way, I finally you know, bought myself a table at Supernova. I was bringing my new work there. And I had a gentleman approach me and say, hey, I really like uh, these Batman pages that you've been doing. Your work shows real, you know, really strong promise. Um, I'm going to buy them off you, but I know you want to pitch these to your, you know, your publishers that have come today. Hold on to them for me. I'll pay for them now. Pitch them and see, tell me how you go. Uh, that person was Duncan. So thanks, Duncan. <laughs> 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 Don't think I haven't forgotten because I definitely, I definitely remember anyone that, uh, that supports my work. Um, and I've come a long way since those Batman pages, but I appreciate that you bought them off me. Um, yeah, so I continued my journey uh, through through that, and uh, and along the way, as I was drawing, uh, my dad would come up to me and say, "Hey, um, you love your comic books so much. Why don't you do like the newspaper strips?" And I was like, "Dad, I want to draw comic books. I don't want to do newspapers." And, uh, and he didn't get it. And anybody at Holy normal lifestyle, like normal at work or people that I meet, I'm like, hey, I love to draw in comic books. They're like, oh, you mean the strips in the newspaper? And I'm like, no, 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 like comic books. And nobody really got it. Um, and funny thing was, was it was those comic strips that I used to read, which were the Phantom in the newspaper. And then I went to the local news agency and I was like, oh, they do make comic books. I'm going to open one up. I'm going to find the address. I'm going to write to these people because I want to, I want to draw these comics. And I never did. So sorry, Glenn. Where's Glenn? <laughs> there he is. Yeah. 
Uh, he knows I never wrote it, and which was a shame because. But actually, you wouldn't have hired me back then either, anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> I, had a lot, I had a lot of learning to do. Uh, yeah, so I slowly, slowly progressed, and I was through doing these conventions that I started getting better uh, through my work, and then back to the family gathering. Everyone was there, and for some reason, my old man was late to the party, and he comes in with a smile on his face, and he just points at me, and he says, you're getting famous. And I go, what do you, what do you mean? And they were like, my whole family's there, everyone just like, shut up. And he goes, I went to Costco today, and uh, I handed my credit card over to, to pay for the bill, and the guy goes, oh, um, do you know a guy named Daniel? And he goes, yeah, that's my son. And he goes, oh, amazing, because I bought original work off him. Like his artwork. And, and then at that point, my dad was like, like, I'm proud of you. Finally. <laughs> I didn't let my dad down. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, obviously, my journey for me, to be honest with you, I feel as if started mostly a couple of years ago when I finally got my work done and published through Fruit, which you're. Uh, able to look at right now. Wow, I can't believe it. Um, I do realize that I'm a part of the steam group of people who've been here previously and uh, there's been people here that have been here previously as well that have seen way better artists than me up here. Um, so I definitely appreciate where I am right now and uh, I never thought at this point that I'd be here. So um, I definitely appreciate you guys coming out enjoying dinner. I will say this. Uh, as a creator, uh, my main goal is, uh, I'm going to read you this quote, because uh, at the start of COVID, at the start of COVID, I took a step backwards from my artwork and I said, how do I make my story as best as possible? And instead of drawing, I started teaching myself how to, how to write and how to screen write. And I read this book, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but it's a really great book and I would definitely recommend it. It's um, by Rob McKee. It's called Story. Has anybody heard it? No? Yes. Yeah. Great book. Great book. Um, and he says in his book, and this is the best quote that I've read, he said, when talented people write badly, it's generally for one or two reasons. Either they are, blindly by an, they are blinded by an idea they are compelled to prove to the world, or they're driven by an emotion they must express. When talented people write well, they're moved by a desire to touch the audience. Big difference. Uh, by the time I've finished drawing comic books as a whole, uh, I definitely hope that even just one piece that I've created moves one person and touches that one person. Not physically, I don't want to get you into it. Yeah, but to have that one person come up to me and tell, them, uh, tell me that they've touched me uh, and influence, that, that I've influenced them to pursue what they want to do, no matter whether it's artwork or something else, um, then I'll definitely be grateful for that. Um, I'm grateful for Richard, Fry, Rosie, Tony. Thanks, Richard, Antonio. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to be here. Thanks very much for the invite. Thanks for listening to me. There was one piece of advice that I got given today, and said, and they said, "Don't talk for an hour. <laughs> we don't want people falling asleep." Um, and I hope I don't put you to sleep right now. But it's uh, it's definitely great to be here. Enjoy your night. Enjoy the food. I appreciate it. Oh, so, is that the time? Oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.
All right, g'day everybody. Um, it's Dan here and I'm here with my son Angus to talk about the Lee Fork Memorial Bangala Explorers Club dinner, which took place last weekend down in Sydney, uh, the same night as Sydney Supernova. Um, and um, I was lucky enough to get to go uh, for I think my third or fourth dinner, but um, Angus came along for his first. So I thought I'd get you on the podcast, Gus, hope that's okay. Um, to, well, clearly it's okay, you're sitting here. <laughs> Um, to, just to see what you thought of it and uh, to have a bit of a chat with you about how the dinner went and everything we did. So, um, so when I first said to you, hey, do you want to come along to the fandom dinner with me? What were your first thoughts? Well, I said Im immediately yes, but my thoughts were, um, what if it's just a bunch of old people just t chatting about the fandom? And I obviously haven't read most of the fandom comics so yeah oh so you were worried that people might talk about <laughs> the comics and stories yeah. and you wouldn't know all of them yeah okay but you've read a few mm. yeah. yeah and uh and we've had you review kid fandom in particular on the podcast before mm. so did you feel like you knew enough to get along oh uh, yeah okay yeah definitely so you're expecting you're expecting a bunch of old people talking about the fandom and mm. you just weren't sure how that was going to go yeah. All right. So when we when we arrived and we um, what what was what was your first impressions when we first walked into the room? Oh wow, it's exactly as I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, because there's a bunch of old people standing around and talking to you <laughs> and talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> and it was good to be able to meet a few people straight away. So um, who are some of the people you remember meeting at the at the dinner? Um, I remember meeting. Antonio, um, I, he was really nice. Um, Paul Mason, um, he was really nice as well. <laughs> there was a lot of different people, hey, it's yeah. hard to remember all of the names. Um, do you remember meeting Andrew? Yeah, yeah. It was good to have a chat with him about, yeah. um, what did you talk to him about? Um, well, about me doing a, a few podcasts earlier, um, earlier, <laughs> um, yeah. How did it feel to be actually talking to the writer? This is something that I've done a few times and I didn't sort of expect, but you've, you know, we've re you review a story, um, and then you have your opinion on it, and then all of a sudden you're talking to the person who wrote it, and then Paul Mason as well, who drew it. Yeah. Um, what, how did that feel, talking to, knowing that you'd already talked about their stories and then you're chatting to the creators. It was really awesome to meet them and how they viewed how they were writing them, mm. which is really not awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And honestly, they're really nice people. Yep. And it's awesome that they could come up with Kid Phantom because it is such an amazing comic. Cool, cool. Um, do you remember catching up with Bradley? Yeah, yeah, he, he was the one who did my shirt. Yes, so yeah. if you can't see that, um, that's a, a Phantom shirt that Bradley uh, put together and, um, and you're lucky enough to have one of those. So it was really cool to be able to catch up with Bradley and his wife Joyful. Yeah, yeah, that, they were really nice. Yeah, and Antonio you mentioned, um, and <laughs> what did you tell me about Antonio? He has a really nice accent. <laughs> he really does, doesn't he? Yeah. He's a, and he's such a lovely man. Yeah. Made, he made sure he got a photo with, <laughs> with you at the end. So, yeah. um, All right, so... What about dinner itself? How was dinner? Dinner was really nice. I really liked um, the fish and chips. Yep. Yeah. And uh, who did you sit with? Um, I sat with Carl, Mara and Eleanor. Mm -hmm. Three other people. Yep. Kids. You were at the kids table? Yes. You were at the big table though. <laughs> you yeah. were at pie. Yeah. Yep. And um, what sort of things did you guys chat about at dinner? Bidding. Bidding. <laughs> Yeah, All right. It's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it awkward? Because we never met each other before. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, so the thing that you had in common was the bidding, I suppose. And I did want to talk about the silent auction that was going on around the room. So um, what did you... What, what? Tell me all about that. Um, so Mara and I were bidding against these two... At uh, this one pair of rugby pants that were... Um, yeah, one pair of rugby pants. Um, you were both bidding on it? Yeah, it went five from me, seven from her, 
10 from me, 15 from her, and then I just stopped because I knew where it was going. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I didn't give you that big a budget, did I? No. <laughs> and so instead I got the other pair of rugby pants. Yeah. <laughs> so I figured that I these are just as good. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And also not many other people were bidding on it because it's only got one fan and bid yeah. on it and it's rugby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Was that the only thing you were bidding on? Uh, no, I also got this um, rugby club beanie as well. Phantom's beanie. Um, it's got Phantom head there. Phantom's across there. Yep. It is really nice and warm. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you can put it on for the rest of the uh, rest of the chat then. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, and uh, so those are the things that you were bidding on. Um, yep. What about what about the rest of the? Did you have a look around the room and see all of the other items that were um, there to be auctioned? Yeah, um, uh, I went and had a look at all of these um, pieces of artworks. Um, the I really liked the one that had that that was leaf out of Leafwalk's typewriter. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing to see how much that went for. Yeah. Yeah. I shouldn't have even tried. I didn't even try to. Yeah, because I knew how much it would go for. <laughs> well, I think I had a little bit of very early in the piece, but then it got outside my budget as yeah. well. Um, Bradley actually produced a really nice um, catalog, yeah. um, which with all of the stuff that's in it, um, all of the donations, and um, just I'll just have a quick flick through that. Um, Paul Mason, Jeremy McPherson artwork, Antonio Antonio Lemos. Keith Williams, I've just skipped over a few things here, some printer's proofs, um, Bob McLeod print, some coins from Mark Roper, um, posters, the leather band books were fantastic. Did you have yeah. one of those? Yeah, I really wanted one of them, but um, obviously went for a lot. Yeah, they did, and, and fair enough too. Um, scripts, comics, the scripts you mentioned, um, Billy Zane poster was really cool. Um, here's all of the rugby stuff that you were talking about. So is that the purple shorts that, uh, that yeah. Mara ended up with, and you got the white ones? Yeah, the on, pretty much the only difference other than the colour was um, this little bit of stuff in there. Yeah, right. Grip. Yeah. Um, badges and look, the, the book goes on. There's the script that you were talking about there before. Um, yeah, so heaps of heaps of stuff and, and, and again, Bradley, fantastic job putting the catalogue together. It just looks fantastic. Really, really well done. Um, so, da, 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 da. I was very excited um, to pick up a, uh, actually I think Mara's dad donated this one, um, oh, cool. which was cool, so I was able to pick up the uh, the superheroes faux figure there and it'll have quite a pace up here at some point I imagine, um, in, the, in, the new, um, in the new display case. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was really, Dima Leadwash was also really generous, um, he unfortunately couldn't come, um, but he always donates one of his 99.94 .94 prints for the raffle, which was really cool, raised lots of money there. Um, and we were also, he was also nice enough to send down a bunch of um, prints from 99.94 .94 as well, which um, people were able to, to get as an auction. Uh, sorry, this is a takeaway at the end. Um, now, before anyone gets cranky, because I know we've ended up with two and we're told only one even, no matter how many people were there, we were one of the last ones to leave and uh, Richard, there was still a few left over and Richard saw, made sure that Gus got um, a print that he really liked, which was, tell us about the Mandrake one. Um, it's Mandrake and the Phantom running away from the Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and Brother in arms, the lads together for the first time by a Fred Fredericks. Actually, you might not even know this, but Fred Fredericks is the, he drew the Mandrake comic strip for like over 30 years. Oh, wow. um, he's like the side barry for Fred Frederick, for, for, um, for Mandrake. Um, yeah. But he also drew the Phantom Sunday strip for a while as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think he's the only person to have ever done both of those. So that's a pretty cool pickup. And uh, that'll go hanging up in your room at some point. Eventually, yes. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as we can get a frame for it. All right, so Gus, what was um, in your in your opinion? What was the best part of the night? Um, probably try running around and trying to make sure no one would bid against me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like whenever um, someone was going into the room, I'd start freaking out and just edge in and just start looking at whatever I was bidding on. Yeah, just <laughs> to make sure you got the beanie. Yeah, <laughs> I really wanted the beanie. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. 
Um, I, I also enjoyed the, the bidding as well, but I actually really enjoyed um, um, Antonio Del Dia. No, hang on. The, oh, in, I've stuffed that. Antonio Del Dio, um, who was the auctioneer for us as well. So different, Antonio Lemos was the artist we were talking about. Different Antonio was doing the auction and I thought he was really funny. Um, yeah. I know you said he went on for a long time. Yeah, yeah, but it was pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I'm getting late in the night then. Yeah. So it was a late night. Um, we didn't get home until... 12. No, it was 12. It was after, it was nearly one by the time we got home, by the time we walked around looking for somewhere to go and then waiting for a taxi. Um, but would you go again? Definitely. Yes, definitely. Why? It was just so fun and everyone there is so nice. Yeah, yeah. okay. Cool. And they've inspired you to uh, jump on and make more videos. Yeah. Yeah. It w I haven't done one in a while, so yeah. It, it's really fun to do them. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm sure we've gone for much longer than we did, thought we were going to, but that's exactly how we do things here at Chronicle Chamber. So um, until next time, thanks everybody for watching and... Happy me. <laughs> well done. Hello guys, we're here with Julie Dittrich. How are you? I'm really good, thanks, Jermaine. Um, so we're out here at Supernova. Um, you're at the booth with a few others, as well, including uh, Chris Secure, who's another Phantom um, author. And we're here with Julie, and we've been talking probably the last, uh, on and off, for probably about a good hour yeah, over the last couple of days. Yeah, that's just today, Jermaine. Yeah. Yesterday was a whole instalment in, in and of itself. It was. Um, so have you been enjoying Supernova? Yeah, it's a really great um, weekend, lovely people popping by, lovely relaxed conversations and lots of phantom people. Yeah, well you're here with Royalty, you got Matt over there and yep. there's all the others down there, it's, it's a real phantom theme. I heard all about the auction that happened last night yes. uh, and congratulations to all the fans for raising $7,000, my understanding is, for, um, for charity, so that's excellent. Well done, yes. And so we've been talking about this poster that's behind me there. A lot of fans have probably seen that before. Uh, and I know you're not allowed to say too much, but can you tease a few fans in about 20 seconds or so? Yeah, it's a, it's a sequel to a story that came out called The Golden Circle in the late 1930s, which is an all criminal gang woman's um, story. And in, in this case, Fifi's back, and the phantom phantom tussles with them all. <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome! And and so that should come out in the next year or two. Ah, uh, it Maybe. depends on through. Yep. Uh, we're halfway there with the art, um, so probably sometime in 2023. But I'm not quite sure. No worries. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you for promoting the phantom. Thank you, Jeremy. How are you going everyone? We're here with Matt on Sunday after the dinner. Uh, how did you go Matt? Did you enjoy it? This is your first dinner? Oh, I had the time of my life. It was really good. I, uh, I sat with some excellent people. I met lots of lifelong Phantom fans. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was like being with my people. And after being at Supernova all day and drawing and talking about the Phantom like all day for hours and hours, and then going to dinner and continuing those conversations, that was great. I, I hope I can come to another one. That's cool. So, have you been busy here? Yeah, yeah, flat out. Um, doing uh, sketches for people. Um, I, I brought a lot of sketches, pre-drawn ones and blank ones, and um, I'm down to my last two. Uh, if, if you pan over, yeah, that's it. Well, uh, and you've still got some prints as well, so if you're watching yeah, I've, this... I've, I've run out of a lot of prints, a lot of these are, are, are completely gone, so what's left is here. And some of the original pages from the day at the races are here. And some of the layouts for um, Diana and the Heartbreakers gang are here. But yeah, some these have been going as well. And the comics, you know, um, I, I brought down a box of comics. It looks like I'll be taking back an empty box at the rate we're going. That's good. Oh, it's good to see you. It's good to see you at the dinner as well. And uh, thanks for your time. Absolute pleasure. G'day guys, here with the guest of honour from last night. Uh, how are you? Good mate, good, how are you? Uh, good, how did you pull up after last night? 
Ah, uh, mate, it was a great night. I put up pretty well. It was a, it was a late night, but um, but we all enjoyed ourselves, I think. And uh, yeah, I'd love to do it again. It was awesome. Awesome, yeah. A lot of people heard a lot of comments. Um, just to talk to fans about with what you spoke about, um, your humility um, as you spoke and that touched a lot of people. So thank you for sharing your story. Um, and a lot of people have uh, enjoyed your artwork and and, and stuff like that. Um, and just the yeah, the journey that you went on it was it was great to be able to. I guess getting insight in that. So uh, thank you for sharing Thanks, that. Thanks, man. I um I thank everyone for, <laughs> for listening yeah. to that journey. But it was a great night to be there. Yeah. yeah. It was a it was a definite honour. So uh, your piece went for just under a thousand. I think it was about eight nine. Yeah, I think it was about nine hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you happy with that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's all for West Bay Hospital. So yeah. Uh, definitely appreciate what they what they do there. So. Uh, hosted by Doctor and Antonio and Richard as well, so uh, great cause, great people. Yeah. Uh, did you laugh much during uh, Antonio auctioning <laughs> skills? <laughs> oh no, laugh. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no worries. And you've been busy here at Supernova. Yeah, today having a great day, summer. having a great show. Uh, it's good to have shows back, um, back in full swing. So yeah, just happy to be back and, and see everyone again. No worries. Well, thank you for your time. Thanks, thank you, Thanks very much. Appreciate today it. and everything else as well. And um, yeah, please keep it up. You're doing an amazing job. Thanks. Hello, y'all. I am here with Alex Tripp. How are you going, Alex? Yeah, pretty good. Mate, this is the quietest I've seen you all weekend. <laughs> yeah. You have been crazy. These here, these with the metallic, what's the technical term for them? Uh, it's, it's called sleeking in the printing world, but metallic is easier, easier for, term for, for us. Yeah. People that don't know non-printers, yeah, non-printers, and they are amazing. Um, Thanks, man. You've done a great job with them. Been talking, like hearing everyone talking about. Have you seen these? Have you seen those? So, I appreciate it, man. Looking it forward to uh, seeing a phantom one. Yeah, me top. too. Some yeah. chains, some guns, maybe yeah. a ring, metallic. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll no, it should look good. So, um, how did you go with the dinner last night? It was enjoy? excellent, really. First, first time phantom dinner. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's, uh, the auction was funny. Yeah, it he's, was a good, he's a really cool dude. Yeah, yeah, the whole hour of just laughs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was great to have you last night. Uh, great yeah, to thanks, see man. you. Um, I was surprised how many of the uh, Phantom fans knew who I was. Just very surprised. They knew me by face already. People must have been saying stuff. Yeah, no, it's, everyone's been impressed. Uh, everyone's loved your um, your it's folio hard. piece as well with the ship. Um, I've heard that you got a great story about it with what you've been yeah. telling me, all the work and detail you put in it as well. So Yeah, I, I learned how masks of the ships work, where the rope systems and pulley systems go. Like, I wanted it to be accurate. And I even did that with the with the train, the going from Turkey to France. Yep. I got the right train for that right for the right era. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Attention to detail. Yeah, well, for nothings like us, we appreciate that and we like Thanks, that. Thanks, so uh, thank you. It's good to uh, meet you face to face. Yeah, likewise. Um, Hopefully, I'll be on the podcast at some point. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to get you on the podcast. So <laughs> yeah, that's um, it's on video now. So <laughs> yeah, you can't take it back. Yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for your time. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Hey, going all. We're here with Kieran Jack. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Thank you. Uh, you been busy here this? It's been flat. I'm exhausted. Run off my feet. <laughs> That's good. I've just got to quickly pan through some of your work. There's a phantom one. And I heard that there's a, a red version of that that it's all sold out on as well. Yes, we've sold out of them this weekend. They've been very popular, the red phantom, which is uh, fantastic. It's great to be able to have that there for the fans to kind of pick up. No worries. Now, obviously, these are the ones that you've done here. A lot of yep. fans will recognise the apparition. Uh, how's that gone? Has that gone well? It's been received really well. Um, it's, it's great to have some new stuff here after three years away from Sydney. But uh, it's really cool to be back and kind of pitching my work to everyone that's coming here to these events. No worries. And it was your first time at the dinner as well? Yeah, yeah. I went to the Phantom um, charity event and it was fantastic. fantastic. <laughs> With the PH, of course. Oh, no, yeah. PH, always PH. Lady yeah. D will do very well. So that was your first time. I uh, yeah. liked it. Incredible experience. I really didn't know what I was getting myself into going and it was uh, very well received for someone who uh, hadn't been there before and welcomed. So it was really cool to be a part of it. No really what, was your, what was your favourite moment? 
Uh, just meeting everyone. I got to meet a lot of people, some of them who I admire, who are in the industry as well, so getting to talk to them as well, so that was really cool. And just, yeah, just being able to have a drink with them and talk to them and talk to them their work. No yeah. And what do you think of uh, Antonio and his auctioning skills? <laughs> One of a kind, absolutely one of a kind. Fantastic, I loved it. It was great. It was entertainment. Yeah, it was Pure entertainment. Yeah. And uh, Daniel delivered a very good. Um, yeah, very it was a very well. emotional speech, but it was uh, it was very well presented. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, keep up the good work, and um, look forward to uh, catching up with you again. Cheers, man. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, Myself and Dan, uh, who were there at various stages of the of the weekend, had a great time. Um, I hope everyone that was there as well also had an amazing time as well. It it it, it is fun. Um, anyway, if you want to find out more about us, you can find us on our website, which is chroniclechamber.com. Our email address, which is chroniclechamber at gmail.com. Uh, we're also on social media, which is Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, you can subscribe to us via YouTube or through your favorite podcast apps, including iTunes or Spotify. Thank you. Stay safe. And our next podcast will be either a comics and news review or um, an interview with Pity M. So that one is very interesting podcast, so I'm sure fans will enjoy that as well. Until next time, stay safe and happy Thanksgiving. Not die. The man come. The ghost who walks. The man come. Enemies beware. The phantom's always there. But you won't find the phantom. He finds.